Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. The song we're going to sing is song number 15 in your blue binders to open us up this morning, get us going, get us in the spirit, get us laughing and singing and having fun and praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's Sunday. Amen. Amen. It's Sunday. Amen. I know it's been a long week, it's been a long month, it's been a long year. Doesn't matter. We're here to praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> song number 15 in the blue binder. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. That saved the wretch. I once was lost. Grace that's hard In grace my fears My precious dear The how I first believe The Lord has promised His words my hope He wills my shield So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, let it overflow. So let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. Oh, I saved the rest. I once was lost. Oh, I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught. Oh, how precious did was the how I first believed the Lord has promised His words my hope. Oh, He wills my shield. What as long as life endures, so fill my cup. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. So let it overflow with love. Amazing, amazing grace. Oh, that saved the rest. I once was lost. It was grace that taught oh, 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 oh. It grace my fears yes. Oh Lord, how precious dear yes. What the how I first believed Oh, the Lord is promised Oh, it works my hope Oh, Lord, he wields my shield So fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. Oh, so let it overflow with love. So fill my cup, Lord, Lord, please come. So fill my cup, Lord, Lord, please come. So fill my cup, Lord, oh, let it overflow. So fill my cup, Lord, thank you, Lord, please. 
so fill my cup. Please fill my cup. Oh, let it overflow. Sing it one more time. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Well, church, uh, my name is Kenyatta Charlie. I'm one of the deacons here. And I want to welcome you this morning to the RCC morning worship service. Amen. Um, right now, I'm just really, I don't want to say overwhelmed. I'm just moved by gratitude. Amen. Because right now, I'm, I'm witnessing something that I'll, I'll, I'll never see another again this day. But I know one day I'm going to see this young man over here being 15 years old. And I'm not joking when I say this. And be able to say, I remember seeing you dance in the aisles. You're going to be like, and, and, and I know we're clapping, but he's going to say, oh, I know Mr. Ken. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Ken. I was like, all right, young man, go on over there, play the drums. I'm about to go back here and sit down. <laughs> and I'm grateful if God allows me to see that. Amen. Amen. And as Christians, we need to be grateful for that. We get to come together as the body and worship. Amen. Because this day we'll never have again. This is a day that God has given us to come and worship with gratefulness, joy, and gratitude. So today, open your hearts to the message that Mark is going to give. Open your voices to give God glory. Amen. And uh, Mark is going to come and uh, share some things with us. Amen. Amen. Well, church, I'm really excited about what God is doing. Amen. Uh, remember, a few years ago, we went to Mexico. And remember, Terry was trying to get all me to rotate as many as I can bring over the years to go back to Mexico. <laughs> and so he called me this week and said, it's time for y'all to get back out here, you and Vanita, and uh, help us and, and be family and just want to be around us. So I told him, I said, okay, we'll do this year. Because hopefully everything be cleared by June. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to need you to bring somebody with you. And, and bring somebody to help us and your closest friends. I said, now, I'm close to, the closest to Sal and Patrice. She went, oh, that's the one that does the children ministry. Oh, yeah, you got to bring them. Because they got tons of kids and need help organizing their children ministry. Amen. And then they said, let's go ahead and talk about next year. What? Okay, we're already going to do this. He said, next year, is there any way you can bring Tremaine and Brittany, their whole family out? And I heard you told me Tremaine speak a little Spanish. He said, could Tremaine preach a whole lesson in Spanish? I said, let me get back with you. <laughs> I didn't want to tell no lie. So I called Tremaine up. In fact, me and Benita went up to train my house and said, brother, can you, I know you speak Spanish. How much? Can you do a whole lesson? He said, Dad, just give me a few months. I have a whole lesson lined up in Spanish. He said, he said look, I, I can read Spanish better than I can speak Spanish. I said, what? He said, I'm just going to all write it out in Spanish. And I'm, he said, as long as I don't go off detour and just stay to my notes, I'll be just, we'll, we'll be just fine. I said, well, okay. He said, I can't tell no stories of the church in Spanish now, but I can stay in line in Spanish. And so we've already organized two years to go back to Mexico back to back and I'm so humbled by that and, and they tell us they watch our message all the time I want to say to Terry and Barbara uh, I, we've known them now almost 33 years 32 years uh, my God I'm just so grateful to have friends that stay in the fight and I told him they went to Mexico on their own spent their own money and then asked nobody for nothing and planted a church Amen. and uh, I'm just so inspired by what God is doing. And then when they asked us to come the first time, they paid for everything. So I said, look, I'm going I'm to I'm get some money from the church. We'll be all right. He said, no, you're not, Mark. We're paying for everything. We've been blessed. Finance is not our issue. It's people. Amen. Just come. So we're going. And uh, so this year in June, Mark and uh, Vanita and... Uh, Sal Patrice will take a week in Spanish in, in, in Mexico for that. The next year, I'm thinking I'm taking somewhere between 12 and 15 people. Uh, we, <laughs> and, and then she told me I have no choice with Tremaine and Brittany because she, she looked at them as you know as their parents. They raised them while I was in the ministry. They was in our ministry, so she already on call. Uh, Michael and Kanisha, y'all coming no matter what, and she's trying to get Bruce them coming. 
But I know she's going to want me to bring a few people from here. And so we, that is incredible to have a mission field that we are working with Amen. across the sea, Amen. helping people know Christ. Amen. We're living at our purpose, church. Amen. So not only are we going to live out our purpose there, but we're going to live out our purpose here. That's right. Amen. Giving God all glory and praise and honor. That's right. So I'm going to say to you what our deacon says to you. It's time. Let's go. I can't hear you. It's time. Let's go. We're going to make a difference in this world. I'm looking forward to God being glorified through us. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, just uh, thank you so much for just the uh, just the news and, and the vision, God, that you have for uh, our church here at the RCC, God, and uh, even there in Mexico. Uh, we're just grateful that uh, you are always pushing your uh, your kingdom forward, God, just not for us here, but God, even for generations that are to come. We love you. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. And it's these things we pray in your son's name. Amen. 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 I want to say, church, I really appreciate what Ken shared. And I tell you all the time, your kids. He said, don't devil prevent them from coming to him. And what I was most encouraged by this morning, he was trying to get Darcel's son and others to join him. <laughs> he, was, he was like, hey, come on. You know, I mean, he's, he's a year and 10 months. Figure this out. And if they can do it now, uh, now think about Darion, you're going to hear. And what God is doing to him. And, and then if I help people see him, Doing that, they watch him. Amen. They, why not? Can, instead of having a vision to be pro football players, right. vision to be pro yeah. basketball players, yeah. yeah. how about a vision to be men and women of God? Amen. 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 Come on here, son. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the next song that we're going to sing is song number 423 uh, as we get ready to prepare our hearts for communion. Uh, it's going to be in your burgundy books. They'll be uh, up underneath the cushion or up underneath your seat if you need them. Psalm number 423 in your burgundy book, Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> Jesus is Lord. My Redeemer, how He loves me, how I love Him. He is risen, He is coming, Lord, come quickly. Amen. Uh -huh. 
brothers and sisters. My name is Jamie Watkins, and um, I have the honor and the gratitude to be able to share in our communion portion of service. Amen? I just want to give a thanks to our church leadership for giving the opportunity to share in something that's really vitally important for us to understand in regards to our relationship with God, uh, how much Jesus' sacrifice should mean to us and for us. So um, before we read in John 6, uh, verse 53 through 59, again, John 6, 53 through 59, I want us to think about a few things as we uh, enjoy our time of communion with God. Um, think about this. Think about the last time you were extremely hungry for whatever reason. You didn't get a chance to eat. You were busy. Life happens, taking care of kids. You just didn't have a chance to eat, and you were really, really hungry. We respond differently to being hungry. Different people respond yeah. different ways. Uh, it's one of the most basic ways <laughs> is just for your stomach to start growling. Right? We know that feeling. Uh, it can be really quiet, and you're somewhere mid-morning, someone hasn't eaten, and everyone hears their stomach growl. It's a little embarrassing. Um, for some of us, we get a little lightheaded when we haven't eaten. We know it's time to, to, to get a snack or, or have that next meal. And some of us just feel weak altogether. Um, everyone's body's different. Some of us actually get angry. And I think a, a, a term was called hangry. When you're hungry and it becomes anger, you're hangry. Um, and sometimes when we are, we're given opportunity to be given some type of food and we're in that state and we have all those feelings that I kind of just described sometimes we make bad decisions in regards to the food choices you'll eat anything to satisfy that hunger and um, usually it's not a good thing meaning the food is sometimes it's a quick food junk food something that's quick just to uh, to get you feeling not hungry sometimes it makes you sick uh, maybe not totally physically sick but as soon as you eat it, you say to yourself, I, kind of, I should have eaten that. <laughs> Who said that? I, we've been there before, right? Um, as soon as you eat it and you feel good for like 90 seconds, all of a sudden you go into, man, I regret eating. I should, have, I should have waited. So we've been there. And sometimes we say after that, the regret, we say, you know what? I need to make better decisions. I need to plan out my meals or have a healthier snack uh, with me. And... You know, I, I kind of walk down that road because I think most of us, all of us have been there. The physical hunger that we have can also parallel a spiritual hunger. When we eat the wrong thing spiritually, we can have that same outcome when we're hungry. So let's now look at John 6, and I'm going to read 53 through 59 in John 6. And it reads... Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life, excuse me, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. You know, I share that um, message because I want us to really understand that Communion represents food that lasts forever. Amen. Communion represents food that lasts forever. In this conversation that Jesus was having, we have to understand that Jesus represents life. Jesus represents life. Jesus said if we remain in him, he will be in us. Jesus lives because of the Father, and we live because of Jesus. Jesus tells us that, that whoever feeds on him will live forever. We should never forget that when we have our time of communion. It is a time for us to remember Jesus' sacrifice for us. It's a time for us to realize that we absolutely need him. We need his example. 
and we should be obedient and follow in his footsteps. That our life on earth, the food that we receive on earth, the spiritual food should all come through him. And if we're at a place where we know we're not being fed spiritually, then it's up to us right now to say, you know what, I need to change. God has given me people, given me opportunities to do more, to do better. Let's be humble enough to accept those opportunities and not let Jesus' sacrifice for us individually go in vain. Amen. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for this, this time of communion. Thank you for um, just your son's sacrifice and the human emotions that he felt in not wanting to lose his life the way he did, but he pushed through just so we could have opportunity to actually know who you are. Thank you, Father, for that. I pray that we, our hearts never grow hard or our, our, our flames never burn out and grow cold and wanting to appreciate and be thankful for that ultimate sacrifice. Father, let us never forget what Jesus means for us. Let us always cherish communion and be appreciative of your son's sacrifice for our lives individually. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Darion Epps, and I'm here to present the tithing portion of the service. Amen. First, I want to thank Pastor Mark and his wife, Miss Vanita, Elder Royale, and his wife, uh, Miss Rochelle, for allowing me to present here today. Amen. And let's get started. Okay. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7 and 8. Now I'll give you a few seconds to turn it. And it reads, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And the, the definition of tithing is to pay or give a tenth of our income to God. But God also wants to give with a cheerful heart and not give reluctantly. Amen. How dare we hoard God's money when he, when he gave and provided the money for us. Amen. I'm a 15 year old <laughs> Amen. and when I can tie it, I give God what I have cheerfully. Even if it's, even if it's not a lot. But one time, I gave God all I had because I had a conviction to tithe. And after that, unexpectedly, I had received $100, which was a blessing from God. <laughs> and I was just amazed and gave God all the honor and glory. But we don't tie to receive blessings. We tie because God wants us to. Hold on. Sorry. If we can all give cheerfully, God is going to bless us abundantly because God always fulfills his promises. If we can have these convictions, convictions we are going to grow exponentially. And with that, let us pray. Amen. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day. Please, God, I pray we can give with a cheerful heart and not reluctantly. Please, God, allow the rest of the service to go well, and I pray that we can get something from the upcoming message and just apply it to our lives. And God, please just watch over us and keep us safe. I ask you to heal all those who are ill, and I love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heaven's on the other side this morning before Pastor Mark brings up his lesson. Amen. And it's not in the songbook, but it's pretty easy to catch on to. So go ahead and give it a listen for the first time if you haven't heard it before. And then go ahead and jump in where you fit in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Heaven's on the earth. The side head bends on the uh, the side head bends on the uh, the side oh head bends on the uh, the side I will make it I will make it cause head bends on the uh, come on brothers the, the side, side you know that head bends on 
the other side has been on the other side has been on the other side oh been on the other side i will make it i will make it cuz has been on the other come on sister the side has been on the other side has been on the side is on the other side oh yeah is on the other side i will make it i will make it and is on the other side is on the other side is on the other side i said hey
Hey, I don't need a whole band. Let me just have JC and, 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 uh, and uh, Tremaine. I, I, I don't need everybody, but JC and Tremaine, I need. Just, hey, uh, where, where's Brian? We don't need a drum. Bring the drum back. You, you, you do the drum. Um, you come back up here. I need a beat, man. And I, I'm moved because heaven's on the other side. Amen. Come on, I'm moved. See, I, I, everybody else can sing from their seats. Yeah, they seats. Yeah, come Amen. on now. Y'all ready? He said, he said, he was like, we're going to go off the stage quick because we know he's going <laughs> Y'all ready? Let me try to rhyme, but I'm going to rock. That's why they going to rock the stage. Y'all ready? Amen. Yeah. Vins on the other side, yeah. Vins on the other side, yeah. Vins on the other side, oh, yeah. Vins on the other side, I will make it. I will make it. Cause heaven's on the other side, yeah. Vins on the other side, yeah. Vins on. morning with us. Let's give her some love. Amen. Where's all my, all my school teachers? Stand up. All my school teachers, stand up. Look at them. Go ahead and stand up with them, Leah. Yeah, let's give them some love. Amen. Y'all job is not easy. I'm telling you right now. But we appreciate you. The firemen, their job is not easy. But we appreciate you. The police officers, their job is not easy, but we appreciate it. The preacher, his job is not easy, but we're going to appreciate it. The members of the congregation, it's not always easy for you, but we appreciate you. Let's just give our heart to God and trust him. Family, what I'm going to talk about today is simply salt and light. Salt and light. 
And the challenge of that is we must be a salt to the earth and light to the world. Salt and light. We're not doing this for play play. We're being a Christian because God has called us to be a Christian and we must live accordingly. And we must be a salt of this earth. Let me share some things with you. To be salt means to be deliberate, influence the people in our lives by showing them the unconditional love of Jesus Christ by our actions. That's salt. You, you, you've been deliberate by how you live your life. Showing people unconditional love by our actions. Not by just our words. By our actions. People must not, they must feel our love and see love through you and go, there is a God. Are you with me, family? Yeah. To be light means to be a witness of others concerning the truth of God's word. Yeah. Especially about who Christ is and how he died and rose again for our salvation. Yeah. That's light. Yeah. We must be a light to this world, showing them the truth about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Our world do not know the truth about Jesus. Yeah. They think it's okay to be a homosexual. They think it's okay to live in adultery. They think it's okay to tell lies. They think it's okay to hate one another, be full of prejudice. They think all oh, that is okay, and it is not. The light shows that. And so we need to be a light to this world so they can see the truth. I heard something on TV the other day that was frightening. It's about one lady, they were in sin. And her words about her sin was this, I hope it become normalized. That's how our world look at Christianity like, okay, I do this, but if you ask me not to do that, no, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to try to normalize it. That's right. So that is acceptable. Yeah. It can become acceptable to the world, but it's not acceptable to Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, some of the things you, we do, it, we, it's like we make it okay, but it's not going to be okay when you meet Christ. Remember, our goal is heaven's on the other side. Yeah. We're not living this just to talk and come to church and sit in the pew. We have an end goal. And our end goal is heaven. Yeah. And we're going to do all we can to help all those around us go with us. That's why my friend in Mexico of 32 years said, man, I need some help of encouragement to the body. They need to know that there's other people living like them. Around them, 99% of people do not believe the Bible. 99%. They believe in religion and you just be religious. But if you have to read the Bible, they think you're crazy. Because that's the easy way out is just to be religious. We must not be religious people. And you got to be careful you don't be bought it by into being religious. Because religious, being religious can creep up on you. You go like, I, I, I know God. Yeah, I believe. But don't ask me to get up and go to church every Sunday. Don't ask me to read my Bible every day. Y'all do that. But I believe. That's a religious person. See, we can get caught up in that. A religious person can get sick and, 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 and they'll run to their sickness before they run to God. They allow their sickness to dictate their lives, and Christ stopped dictating it yeah. That's right. and become religious. Yeah. You don't think I wake up some morning feeling sick. Mm -hmm. You don't think I wake, my, we, I wake up some morning and go like, church? Father, is there any way you can find somebody else to preach today? <laughs> You're not the only one get tempted. Yeah. I get tempted too. And I got to really fight to not allow Satan's temptations to make me get off track. I got to stay, like we talked about in Sunday school, aligned with God. So if I got to stay in line with God, what about you? Oh, is it just me? It's all of us. Hey, Willie is fighting for his life. Fighting to get healed. But watches every week. I pray with him, go spend time with him twice a week. You will get, spend time with him and never know that he was even sick. Was on his dying bed. You would never know how he communicates. 
and trying to figure out how to get back to church. I said, Willie, you in church. You in the spirit. Don't lose that. And God will open that door for you in time. Spent 48 days in the hospital. But we must not give in to say lies. He spent 48 days in the hospital. I'm telling you, I witnessed it. I went there twice a week. He let his light shine. Passing out cards to people. Talking about Jesus. In his bed. At times he didn't even know he's going to be around if he's going to live the next day. Talking about Jesus. I was inspired, convicted, and called higher. I'm in this thing to win it. I might lose all my teeth, one arm, both my legs instead of one. I'm going to be a mumbling. <laughs> one arm, one leg. Do you want to know Jesus? <laughs> Come on now. I'm not going to stop, stop talking about Jesus because I don't have no teeth. We got to gain these convictions, family. We must. Listen, salt adds flavor and light illuminates. Salt permeates. 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 There you go. Thank you. That was a tongue twister for me. Permeates and purifies. To represent salt, we must be honest and have a good reputation. Whoa. Are we honest people? Hey, I'm going to talk to the people in the room at the RCC. I'm not just going to talk to the world. Are we honest people? Hear me. Do we have a good reputation? Everywhere we go? That's been a salt to the earth. To the people, they see that that God is in you. Or when people want to gossip and slam, they can run to you because they know you're gonna do it with them. When people talking behind each other back, you they know they can bring that to you. I never forget my wife came home. Uh, I don't know if it was this year, or last year, might have been this year, and one of her coworkers told her, "Miss Harris, I almost almost said something, but I'm gonna wait till you leave the room because I know you." Don't play that. Amen. And Vinita still told me, well, you still shouldn't say what you plan on saying. Let me start saying, okay, I'm going to leave the room, but hey, you better think about that. Yeah. Right. But that's a good reputation to have. That's right. That's right. That people know they can't say evil things around you yeah. and you don't look at them like, what is wrong with you? Right. No. We must gain these convictions. Mm -hmm. They know who Tim is at school. They know what they can say and what they can't say around him. They knew who Patrice was in the hospital. I would go, used to go out there and eat lunch and, and, and catch up with Patrice sometime and, or go see somebody who's sick in the hospital. They knew who she was. A woman of God. Do people know who you are? How do you carry yourself? We must be a light to them. A salt. They, not, they got to be able to see there is a God in this ungodly nation. Yes. That there are people trying to live right. Yes. And if they can do it, I can do it. Yes. We must let our light shine and be a salt to this earth. To be light of the world, we must have the spirit of God within us. Yes. This is what make us illuminate. Right. God living in us. We don't illuminate because we want to illuminate. Because you got a big smile on your face. Right. Right. No, it's God living in you. Yeah. That people can see there's something different about you. Yeah. That's what we want people. And then you, when they see that, and, and you tell them you're a Christian, they go, I knew there's something about you. Yeah. Amen. I knew that was the reason. True story, I ain't lying. I was out in my front yard, side yard, because it's front. Side back. Side y'all. And I was on the side and I was watering this little plant we have. And I, I heard brakes. Er, nothing crazy, but they, you could tell it stopped all of a sudden. And I think I told some of you the story. It stopped. And then I turned and a guy had a 
big F-150 white truck just pulled in my driveway. I said, all right, Lord. I really thought, I said, oh, ain't nobody here but me. I hope and pray everything's okay. So let me just walk toward the truck. I looked, at that time, I didn't recognize neither one of them. They're the older couple. So I got, I might be okay. They, they got, they're older, more mature. They ain't nothing crazy, don't seem like it's going on. And I walked to the truck and he said, I said, hey, how can I help y'all? And he said, you smile and wave every time we go by. I've never not seen you do that. I said, well, I'm a Christian. He went, I knew it. I knew that was the reason. And I said, yeah, my church down the street, well, church down the street I'm a preacher. And he said, oh, my goodness. Can we pray right now? I said, sure. He said, we just left the hospital and my wife has cancer. Can you please pray for that? That God will eradicate that? And just pray. I said, absolutely. But I want you to know God's will be done. We just pray, God, let your will be done. Because we don't know what his will is. He might want to take her. And she's sitting right there. But I, I'm not one of those preachers who want to mislead you. It's all about God's will. I said, you understand that, we can pray. And he said, let's pray. True story, I ain't lying. We prayed. About four months later, I'm on the side again. I'm in the front yard this time. The side, front. I was coming from the side, I was in the front, watering another plant. I like plants. And I saw the truck in, and he stopped in the middle of the road, backed up traffic. That man didn't care. So I knew he was. I walked and said, how y'all doing? I just want you to know, preacher, we just came back from x-rays, and they said there's no more cancer in my wife. I just gave God all glory and praise. I said, you want to pray again? <laughs> we just, you give it to God, because I did not do anything. I called on God for you, and he did it. And she went, that's right. They knew where the blessing came from. They understand. That's been a light to this world. Do you know a year went by now, he's still right about me saying, there's no more cancer. God's will was done in that. And I, I, I'm, I'm good with that because I know God don't do that for everybody. And I can't explain it to you. We'll find out when we get to heaven. So my goal is let's just get to heaven. But God's will was done. We need to be a light by be willing to pray with people. Take it to God what was going on. People, people are hurting. This pandemic has hurt people. Financially, and life is no joke. It's a challenge. I can't imagine my grandson having kids in this world. It's a challenge. I don't know how teachers have babies and got to raise them and plus go to work and they don't give them this leave, six week leave. They got to save their leave. That's crazy to me. I hear other countries in Canada, they get three months to six months paid. But they want our teachers here. You better save your leave or you have none. Yeah. What kind of? And then that's the only job they do that with. So it's challenging to survive in this world. We need one another. And we need to be a light to one another. A salt to each other. A foundation in Jesus helping each other make it. We cannot do this alone, but we can do it through Jesus Christ. The light, to be the light of the world, we must have the Spirit of God live within, within us. Light is holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, hope, and God's revelation. Light is spiritual and divine. We need that light. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Are you with me? I'm excited about sharing God's word with you this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. It reads, 
You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, saltness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. We gotta let our light shine. That's right. Yeah, that's right. The brighter we are, the more God is glorified. Amen. Do not let your light become dim. Right. And don't ever stop doing good deeds. Right. That glorifies God's name. We must keep our saltness saltiness and allow our light to shine throughout the world so that God may be glorified by the way we live our lives in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's right. As we walk down the road, as we speak to people, they need to hear and see God. Yeah. Yeah. God made us in his image. Yeah, he did not make us in Satan's image. Yeah. He did not make us to be adulterers. He did not make us to be liars. He did not make us to be deceit. He did not make us to steal and cheat. He did not make us prejudice. Amen, sister. His name is God. He made us to love, build up, be full of joy, peace, and glory. So it don't matter what color we are. We're the image of God. Right. And we're made to be like God because we're a light to this world. Amen. Are you with me, church? Y'all got me fired up in here. Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. This is why it is so important for us to be who we say we are. Christians. Christians must never lose their saltiness and never let their light go out. We must be a people built on a hill and our light cannot be hidden because of God's spirit living in us. We must be a people that when challenging times come, we fall down, we get up. We get up. So when people see that, they say, only God could help you with that. We must not a people be a people that ever quit. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Yes, you're going to get dirty. Yes, you're going to cry. Yes, you're going to fall down. But we must always get up and keep moving. We must not ever allow ourselves to backslide. Don't go backwards. Slide forward. And give God his glory. Are you with me? Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. 1 John chapter 1. We're going to read 5 through 10 and also uh, chapter 2, 1 through 2. Let's start in 1 John chapter 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. Whoa. Who's light? God. Family, it's time. Let's go. I say it is time. Let's go. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Whoa. God says darkness do not live in me. Well if darkness do not live in God, darkness should not live in us. We're here to imitate Christ. That's right. And be like him. In verse 6, if, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness... We lie and do not live out the truth. Let's don't be liars. Don't allow darkness to live. Don't harbor unforgiving feelings and emotions. Don't harbor things in your heart that will keep you dark. Don't allow that to happen. Yeah, man is not perfect, so you will be hurt by man. But God is. He's perfect. And so was his son. We're called to imitate him. And the only imitation we do of man is, is as they imitate Christ. If they're not imitating Christ, we do not imitate them. Do you understand? 
See, the main person we imitate is the father and his son, Jesus Christ. And then you get people like Paul in the Bible who repented and man called a fire for God. We can imitate him. And he says, you imitate me as I imitate Christ. So he's taking no glory. Same with me. I don't, I don't want no glory. I want us to make it to heaven. Every time I come, I think about you guys. You're heavy on my heart. It's not a burden to be your minister. It's a joy. It's a joy. Y'all thank God that Vanita's my wife. Because she helped me build joy. Let it be a joy. Sometimes I'm about ready to lose my mind. She goes, calm down, sweet. She just put her arms on me and I just melt. <laughs> Whatever I need to do, baby. I'm going to eat this hummer pie. I know we can do better and we will do better. She loves Timmy Martin. Let the church grow up. They hadn't, some hadn't gone through near the stuff we've gone through. So as they go through this stuff, be patient and let them grow up in the Lord. Family, we got to grow up. Yeah. It's time to be spiritually mature. Yeah. That's been salt and light. Yeah. It's important that we grow up. You have our little teenager up here teaching the tie. Yeah. Hey, by the way, everybody, he's a Christian. Yeah. A real Christian. We just let him come up here because he's a teenager. That's pretty cool. Look at that teenager. No, he's a man, young man of God. Yeah. Worthy of imitating. We need more of them. We need more deacons who love God, who can teach Sunday school. Come on, Tim. We need more deacons who will serve and give you the shirt off their back. Come on, Sawa. We need more deacons who just love to get with people and build them up. Come on, kid. No matter where you are, he'll be there. If you leave, he wants this place in order. Amen. We need more. Yeah. When my wife found out yesterday we were going to go to Mexico, the first thing came out of my mouth, she said, you taking, we bring it, taking Sal and Patrice with us? Hey, look here. We got to make sure the church is open. I said, God has given us mighty men of God. We're going to be okay. They are the salt and light of this earth. Today. She said, that's great. Just set them up for success. <laughs> I love my wife. Leah, she's something else. She's that gentle, quiet spirit that builds you up. You can scrape your knee and she'll blow it. <laughs> we need more of our sisters. I mean, Rochelle just, woo, just blows my mind. With all her love and quiet spirit and just, whoa. We need more elders. Listen, Royal used to tell me all the time, man, this, this is, thanks for your patience. This is over my head sometimes. No, it's not. God's giving you just what you can handle. That brother is about as humble as it comes. What a partner in the gospel. My God. Listen, I'm telling you, we need more Danas. You don't think Dana, Dana will do whatever you need. Take your children and, and sometimes don't want to give them back. <laughs> yeah, like, so can I have a kid back? But that's our heart. But oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, you don't know? Y'all heard Shadaren speak lately? That little hidden jewel. That, that, that's my sister there. That little, that little hidden jewel, she in trouble. Every chance I get, she's going to be talking to the women. She's a hidden jewel. Such a glorious sister. We need more. And my little sister, Patrice? No, y'all don't know. No, 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 Vanita know. I know you know. I got Whoa! Yeah. 
just so loving and kind, but yet speak the truth in love. Amen. The only other woman in my life ever said, come on, preaching now. I thought she, I was like, hey, what that? You sound like Vinny, what you doing? Because my wife will hold me to the fire tomorrow. Okay, preacher. That means, hey, open that Bible. Don't, you, you said this stuff, now you got to do it. Yeah. Patrice, tell me that in a minute. All right, preacher. I know what that means. But can somebody say things in you, you know what it means spiritually? We need more. We need more Darcells, more Daniels. We need more Johannes. We need more Leahs. She's somebody, how y'all need more of me? A great sweet spirit. Love us, respect us to the core. She will love you the same way. Don't worry, God got a plan for her. She don't know it yet. But God's gonna show it. That's why we need more people like that. So God can show them their plan. His plan. Are you with me? I, I pray to God that Grandma, Papa, a granddaddy, or I don't know what Darion called his grand grandparents. You just call them grand granddaddy and grand grand grandmama. I, I listen. They did a good job with Darion, but his mama. Yeah, now we, you need the grandparents, but mama, yeah. mama. Yeah. If you don't know Candy, you better get to know her. Mama don't play that. Open, speak the truth, and she'd be like, hey, y'all better help me because I don't see it. <laughs> That's mama. Yeah. We need more Carol. Special K, what? Yeah. I can't imagine walking through the door and not speaking to Special K. Right. Right. Special K. <laughs> Thank you. Because I got the podium. We need more. Amen. Oh, family, do y'all get that? We need encourage. We got to be the salt and light, but we need more people to help us be salt and light. We need more. Mama Evelyn, we need more Mama Evelyn. When Mama Evelyn say, all right, now I'm about to be blue. You better, I'd be ready to lose my mind. I want to pick the podium up and flip it. Her spirit moves me. I dare you, Mama Evelyn. Oh! No, she did! I'm coming out the jacket! Uh, no, she did! She did! I'm running down the house! I'm going! Oh, oh, that Vinny's my alright preacher. Oh, that means I gotta go back. Hey, I know what that alright preacher be. Alright, preachers, you ain't gotta say it. <laughs> that means the same thing, alright preacher. Family, are you with me? Do you get it? I know you're laughing, but do you get it? We need more Petrons. My sister, Lord have mercy. We need more. Kenya, need more. My family, all of you, we need more Jaders and JCs. We need more. We need more. But who's up here been saying beside JC? Tremaine. We need more. Yeah, I want to do more weddings. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. So we let our light shine. We will find more people. We will do more weddings. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's my last wedding been about? Less, not a year yet, right? When, when was Christmas ain't been a year yet? When is their year? Hey, how many of some people engaged before November? <laughs> We got hey, we gotta be working on this thing. We gotta let that light shine. Y'all hear me? But we gotta do it. We gotta come together and do it. Now, Daria, Daria, you got plenty of years. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yep, we we got plenty of years. You okay, son? So you ain't gotta let your mind, Ross. You got plenty of years. Hey, Ross, tomorrow. This one. I'm with you. 
We got plenty of time. Yeah. The mail, don't worry about it, son. <laughs> Just keep blowing your nose. You all right. <laughs> Cameron, you okay, my man? Yeah. He's 15 years old tomorrow. I am ready to settle down. But we got some years to go, you rascal. <laughs> hey, Dale, don't make me call your mama. <laughs> Are y'all with me? But I'm glad he knows who he's supposed to sit down with. Amen. Who are you supposed to sit down with, Darren? Who are you supposed to sit down with? Well, God, but a Christian. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who are you supposed to marry? Someone else who loves God. Amen. And you'll be all right. Are you with me? Lord, have mercy. Let me move on. Let's just, you know, he'll, he'll mess with my mind every time you got to settle down. I got to regroup. Johan, I got to regroup now. I got a 15 year old telling me. You gotta, gotta, gotta settle down. Lord have mercy. I need to put you between Special K and Patrice and your mama in front so they can bring some sisters to you. <laughs> but I like where you're going, son. Ain't nothing wrong. Hey, when I was 15, I was already in love. Miss Harris just didn't know it. So I like that. I had somebody in mind. What, you got somebody in mind? I ain't think so. <laughs> Let's make sure that's clear. <laughs> All right, I'm coming back. Yeah, he's coming back. He, baby threw me for a loop. It takes a lot to throw me for a loop. But that was a good loop. So what verse I left off on? Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies from all sin. You see what happens when we walk in the light? Family got to walk in the light. Let there be no darkness in us. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So all of us have sinned. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. God is no liar. Chapter 2, verse 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's Jesus. The atoning sacrifice. Family, God is light, and he, in him there is no darkness. Family, friends, we must get out of get out of darkness and stay in his light. Right. We gotta even teach our kids what's the most priority, and then God is priority. So they go to church, they ain't sleeping. What if they up all night and play video games? Like they world is video games. That's up to us. We gotta train and teach our kids that the world is not video games. It's about Jesus Christ. There ain't nothing wrong with video games until it become your, your Lord. That you can't wait to get up to go play it. Then there's a problem. I can't go to sleep unless I play it. There's a problem. You should be feeling that way about reading your Bible. That's where we're supposed to be. Are you with me? Leah, uh, how old is your daughter? She's eight years old. She, she don't remember ever coming here with a visit before, does she? Sitting next to me, eight years old, a heart of a child, looking up scriptures in the Bible as we presented them, read them, had our own Bible. Amen. We would start singing songs. I could hear her singing next to me. Come on. Thank you, God. Ain't never, don't know none of you, but a heart of a child. Amen. You are not her focus. God was. Yeah, yeah. My grandson, he'd be blowing my mind. I'd be trying to worship sometimes. He'll he'd look around and then he'll forget about everybody and go in his own zone. He'd be in a zone. I, I can't. I, then I try not to look at it, but then when I don't look at it, he disappears. So I'm trying to sing, keep wild on him that he don't just go up and run back on stage or go out in the crowd somewhere. He looked over there and saw who was sitting by Carissa. He saw Parker holding a, holding a book. He want to hold a book. He go out there and want to read with Parker reading. But you can't help but just praise God for that. 
Isn't that what we want our kids to do? If that's all our kids do at church, praise the Lord. Yeah. At least they're not asleep. Right. Not reading. Not paying attention. Yeah. Don't want to listen. You rather that than the other. And then looked up and saw Garcel, uh, son, moving around, and he just froze, standing like, I want, I want, I want, I want to get down with him. Amen. That's how we need to be, family. Yes. Encouraging, building each other up. Amen. Look at First John chapter two, verse one. My dear children, I write this to you, that you will not sin, so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Do we understand that? See, if we understand that, that should relieve, relief, have a relief in us. Yes. Amen. That it makes us more happy. We don't get caught up in sin. Amen. That's right. Because we got our atoning sacrifice. He's our advocate. Yes. Fighting for us to make it to heaven. Because heaven is on the other side. What? Don't you get this preacher getting into it? I love that song because of what? I will make it. Oh, come on. Come on now. We do this because. Heaven on the other side. Y'all been glad I can't sing. We'll be here all day. Because heaven's on the other side. Is that not why we worship him? Is that not why we fight through our sins? Is that not why we sacrifice for our kids? Is that not why we sacrifice for one another? Heaven's on the other side. Are you with me? And God is our light. We must understanding. Now how do we get this light? Come on, now I need to wind this down. Y'all got me fired up. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Because how do we get this light? Well, Acts is going to tell you in 2 verse 36. And we're going to read through 41. So in Acts 2 verse 36 it says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So God said we got to repent and be baptized. Yes, now a lot of people go get baptized, but there's no repentance with it. They just got baptized because they knew they had to get baptized. But if you get baptized and, and there's no repentance, what have you done? You got wet. Because you don't understand. Remember, even throughout the Bible, when before they got baptized, what did what was going on with them? What was going? What, who was who was speaking to them? Peter, then John, all of them. They were teaching them. Then they got baptized. They had to make sure they understood what they knew what they were doing. But we got too many people in this world that just go get baptized. And then they go back and live out their life the way they were before they got baptized. Because there was no repentance. We must repent, family. And friends, you hear me, we got to repent before you get baptized. The promise for you in verse 39, and your children for all who are far off, for all whom the, the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. See, those who accepted the message, they had a message first, and they responded to the message by getting baptized. What is your response to the message? What are you going to do? What is your response to the message? Simone, you been keeping up with me? Come on now. So what is your response to the message online? What are you going to do? Have you, when it got wet before you got baptized? No, you got to get baptized. Before you get baptized, you got to repent. You got to know what you're getting baptized for. You got to know the person you're baptizing in. Jesus Christ. You got to understand what he died for. Your sins. That you got to repent of. There you go. And then we can get baptized. And then we must stay in the light after baptism. Don't never backslide, but slide forward in Jesus' name. And if you do backslide, repent. And so that you can be refreshed because you have an advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
Repent quickly. Are you with me, family? Look at John chapter 8 as I begin to wind. John chapter 8, wind down here. John 8, verse 12. I'm going to go a little faster now. Y'all got me excited about talking about Jesus now. Every time I read with y'all, y'all move my heart. John 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke again to the people and he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. My God, whoever follows Christ will never walk in darkness. Amen. They will have the light of life. Amen. See, are we following Christ? If you're not, you got to decide today to follow Christ. Yes. Because Christ, he is our GPS. Yes, he is. That's right. As my dad would say, Brother Fryson, Jesus is our GPS. Yes. GPS stands for God's plan for salvation. Uh -huh. right. You got to allow God's plan to rule your life. That's right. We got to give up control, surrender to his will. Yes. You got to let go of the will and let the Holy Spirit drive. Amen. Amen. We got to give up control of our lives. Yes. We got to deny ourselves and take up the cross. Yeah. That's right. We can't say we're Christians and we're just lazy all the time. Right. Right. We can't say you're Christians, you know, and I, and I just go to church anywhere I want to go because, see, whatever's closer to my house or whatever's closest to me and you don't know what the, the background of what you're going to. Right. See, if you're a Baptist, you need to know what Baptist teaches. That's right. If you're a Hindu, you better know what they teach us. If you're a Catholic, you better know what they teach. Yeah, yeah. If you're a River City Christian ministry non-denomination, non you better know what we're teaching. Yeah, that's right. So that you know if you're in the truth or not. Because not all religions teach the truth. That's right. And the biggest religion in the world does not teach the truth. Right. You better know that. Yeah. Or you'll just join religion and, and be religious. But Jesus said only a few are going to make it. That's right. Are you one of the few? Are you willing to sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ? If you're not willing to sacrifice, then you're not one of the few. Because you will have a lot to sacrifice when it comes to Jesus. Turn it to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. A couple more scriptures. Jesus, Ephesians chapter 5. I thank my wife for helping me with this message. I enjoy getting in the word with them. Yeah. It strengthens our marriage. Because yeah. we've been there losing our mind off the scriptures. We love getting in the office and just reading together. Ephesians 5 verse 3, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Right. Not even a hint right. of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Right. Nor should there be obscenity Foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. How we partner with disobedient people? For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Amen. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. If it's shameful, it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Yes. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. 
speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs with the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. How do we not be singing to the Lord? You know why I like to sing so much? Come on now. Always give thanks to God, the father of everything in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, I could have just read that at the beginning. What home? Yeah. Amen. Family, friends, let us leave the darkness and live as children of light. Yeah. Leave that stuff. Amen, Amen. Leave it. Amen. Let us break free of the dark, dark secrets in our lives. And let us be full of God's spirit and full of light. That's right. Confess and get open with someone that will help you and not gossip against each other. Build each other up. Get with spiritual people and let them help through the word of God. Let our light shine and let us get out of secret darkness. Don't be deceitful in your hearts. Don't be in sin and hide it because God sees everything. You'd rather come clean now and get help and be too late to come clean when God gets back. Are y'all with me? We must become this. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, my final scripture. Look at Colossians. I am excited about reading the words of God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Start off in verse 9. My pages are sticking together. Bear with me. I'm going to get them. Amen. Got it. In verse 9, and we're going to read verse 9 through 14. For this reason, I like everything we just read. And now listen to what it says here. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We, we are continuing asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. Amen. Come on now. Right. We're going to never stop praying for each other right. that we get this growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and give him giving joyful thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. What? Yes. Amen. What is the kingdom of light? Yeah. Heaven. Come on, now. Right. God wants to inherit this. That's right. Thank you, God. Family, do you understand what I'm reading? Yes. Verse 13, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Come on, Father. Amen. Family and friends, this needs to be an ongoing prayer for us yes. and for one another. Praying that God will reveal his knowledge, his wisdom, and his understanding Amen. so we understand the kingdom of light that we're headed for. God has qualified us to share in his inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. He's qualified us. Don't lose your qualification. He has qualified us to be with him. And we must not ever lose that for no one. We must never forget that God has rescued us through Jesus Christ, his beloved son, from the dominion, dominion, dominion of darkness. He's rescued us. Don't ever forget that. You know what keeps me motivated? Always ready to lose my mind for Jesus. Smiling and having fun. Because I know what I've came out of. I don't forget that I was immoral. I don't forget at 19 years old I'm sleeping with a married woman. In the military. I used to blame her because she initiated but I, I gave in. Why did I give in? Because of my own evil desires. I don't forget all how I used to steal and cheat and lie. It blows my mind that people knew, know me from being a Christian to now because they can't imagine it. Well, I can because I did it. I haven't forgotten that. That's why I'm not walking away. See, we must not forget what we come out of. 
Because you forget, you'll go back to it. Like a dog returning to his vomit. But if you remember what you come out of, you stand and fight. That's why Darion staying at 15 years old in the fight. That's why his mom, Candy, is in the fight. That's why Danielle, come out of all her troubles, got all her kids back because she's in the fight. She remembers what she came out of. That's why Chris and Kim still standing. They remember what they came out of. It always encouraged me when Simone says these words to me. This really encourages me. She's like, what are you going to say? <laughs> this really encouraged me. It tells me she remembers. She understands. She'll say, Mr. Mark, she texts me on my, for my birthday. Say, Mr. Mark, thank you for loving my family. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for always being there for me, even through my craziness. <laughs> what? She said it to me more than once since before. Have you not, Simone? Uh-huh. Now, why does that move me? Why does that make me want to lose my mind? Because I remember my craziness. And it keeps me in the fight. You must remember your craziness and stay in the fight of the Lord. We got to get this family. You got to be motivated by God's word. You got to allow God's word to make you lose your mind for him. Become blind to the darkness and open your eyes to the light. Are you with me? I got to write that down. That's another message. That just came to me. We got to become blind to this darkness mess. Family and friends. We need to be an ongoing prayer for ourselves and for one another. Y'all hear me? We need to be praying that we come to the knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ. We need to love one another and build each other up. We need to have mercy for one another. Have grace. We mess up. Don't look down on people forever in a day. Have grace and mercy. Like I'm having grace and mercy with the phone going off. Have some grace and mercy. And figure out how to build each other up. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. This is what God wants. God has qualified us to share in his inheritance for his holy people in the kingdom of light. What else can what else you need to hear? We must never forget that God has rescued us through Jesus Christ, his beloved son, from the dominion of darkness. Family, friends, let us make this world a better place by being the salt and light of the world Amen. being who we say we are yes, Christians yes, family friends love each other deeply and forgive quickly yes, and build family not just in your household but in the whole world yes. build family yes. we're going to Mexico to build family yes. if I go to Chris and Kim house that's my family yes. if I go the, uh, to uh, Dana and Tim house that's my family yes. I don't care they white and I'm black I know that's right. I eat ribs, he eat ribs. We got the same God, so what's the issue? Color don't matter. Mama, mama, I almost said Mama Evelyn, but I meant Mama Sonia. I miss her cooking. That woman can cook. I'm not kidding you. Some empanadas like no other empanadas. What? I used to go. I used to go to the house and sometimes eat. I, I remember going to the house to eat. I had to go outside for a prayer walk afterwards. <laughs> Father, I have sinned. I didn't stop. Please forgive me. It was so good, Father. I'm sorry. Father, can I go back and get some more? Because we family. I remember going to the lair house and eating and putting stuff on the grill. It's my turn now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blow her mind. I might open up the, 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 the Papa Grill for them. That feeds a thousand. Because that's how I feel about them. And that's how I feel about you. We're a family. We must be a salt and light to the world, but we also must be a salt and light to each other. And to God be the glory. Amen, amen, amen.
So I want to close this way. Let me get the singers in the room. Come on up. All my singers get in the mic. I want to close with this. All of us stand. And we're going to face each other. And we're going to sing, we love you with the love of the Lord to each other. Amen. And we can point to each other, encourage one another. We got masks on. We most of have had our shots. We made an announcement that in April, we plan on being meet back in person in, 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 uh, in April at our midweeks. We're going to go one more month through March uh, meeting online for midweeks. But come April, our goal is to meet back in person on 7 o'clock Wednesday night here in the building. I miss singing even at midweek. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all more than just once a week. Even though I enjoy online saying good night to everybody. That's, my bond. That's the bomb there. I might have to incorporate that on Wednesday night too. That, I, I love that. When we say bye to each other. I'm looking forward to God continue to help us grow not only numerically but spiritually. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you with me, fam? Amen. Amen. I love you and I know you love me. But we're going to love one another and we're going to love this world. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be a salt and light to them. Amen. Let's sing Amen. one another. Let me get my Bible out your way. My forehead wipe. Find my mask and I'm going to get to sing. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We see in you the glory of our King. And we love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We see in you the glory of our King. And we love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We see in you the glory of our King, and we love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We see in you the glory of our King, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity that we've come, that we've had, Father, just to be here, just to worship you, to sing songs. Father, just to lift you up as you so rightfully deserve. Father, we pray to always remember the salt and the light. Father, we pray to always remember to be a light in this darkness, Father. We pray Amen. to always remember to continue to build each other up and not tear each other down. Father, we pray to remember to be who we say we are Amen. every day of our lives until we come be with you, Father. Christians, because that's who you've called us to be. That's who you have deemed us to be. That's the job that you have given to us that we gratefully, gratefully accept. Father, we are grateful. Father, we love you. We thank you for everything that you do. You are awesome in all your ways, Father. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. My name is Tim Young. I'm one of the deacons that serves at the RCC, and I'm going to respond to the message. Amen? Amen. Probably the easiest response I can do because uh, uh, God already spoke through Mark. What's your response? That's, that's what he was saying to us was, um, what is your response to the message? Uh, either we're in the light or we're not in the light. And if we're in the light, we need to stay in the light. If we're not in the light, we need to get in the light, right? And uh, just, just an awesome message. Thank you so much for, for everything that was said. Um, you know, the salt of, I don't want to lose my saltiness. Um, and I pray that we, none of us want to do that. And we got to, so what hit home for me the most is um, remember what I came out of. I have to always remember. And sure, brother. Amen. 
have to always remember what I came out of because uh, it's going to help me to stay in the fight because I don't, I don't want to go back. I'm not going back. And if I do, I need you guys to slap me in the face and tell, and tell me, wake up, you know, and, and, and come to your senses because I know you will, brother, and I appreciate, I appreciate you. Uh, I think you, I'm so grateful to be in a body that cares about each other and that we will help each other make it to heaven. Amen. And if I know if I stray away, um, you know, I'm going to have a lot of knocks at my door. And uh, I feel not only that because it was like that for me uh, before, but I didn't make the relationships. I was able to harden my heart more. Um, and now my heart's a lot softer and my heart for God, I've, I've grown uh, tremendously. I can say that uh, to give God glory because I'm not giving up and I'm going to stay in this fight and I'm here with you guys and we're going to make it to heaven. So I'm just grateful for to be to remember what I came out of and what I did and what I've done in the past and what God's going to do with me now because it's all giving, giving God glory and honor and it's going to be that's going to be the light that people need to see. That's going to be the saltiness that we need to have and I don't want to lose that saltiness. So amen. Let's all of us uh, Focus on what we need to respond to, how we need to respond to this message. I'm encouraged, um, and I pray that you're encouraged, and I pray that we're also convicted when we need to be convicted, because if we need to change, all we got to do is repent. All we got to do is change. So, amen. Thank you so much. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. amen. We're going to um, uh, continue to meet online for this uh, upcoming month. Uh, we're about to start the month of March. Yeah, yeah March. February flew by, didn't it? Uh, so March is now starting up, and men will meet on, on Zoom on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock, and women will meet on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. So make sure we're, we're ready. I'm looking forward to getting back and meeting together here at the building, uh, uh, the following, Lord willing, uh, the following month for that. Amen. Um, Ken and I would like to see, uh, we had an awesome time on Monday playing with uh, the young men of the church, playing with the teens and preteens, and uh, we would like to see the parents so we can plan another time um, and just talk to you guys about how it went and everything. And so today, right after church, if you would, just meet with uh, me and Ken in the back for a little bit so we can share about it. But it was, it was awesome. Amen? Amen. Uh, Amen. Well, uh, let's see. The women on Wednesday night at 7 on Zoom will be Patrice. Okay. And then the men will be Jamie. Amen. So this coming Tuesday, Jamie is going to be giving us the, the lesson. Amen. <laughs> 7 o'clock on Zoom, and then on Wednesday, Patrice is coming with it to give us the mess of the lesson. Uh, amen. So we're excited about hearing all that. Amen. There's no other announcements. We'll go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your mercy and your love and your grace. Thank you for taking us out of the dark, God. Thank you for uh, bringing your son, who is the lightness, who is light, God, who illuminates this world, God. And thank you for all you do. Help us to be... Uh, your light. God, help us uh, to be who we say we are. Help us, Father, to uh, continue to feed ourselves and grow and continue to encourage and build each other up. God, thank you for uh, just being a part of a body uh, who loves you, and I pray that we continue to uh, love each other. God, help us not to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewings of our mind. God, thank you so much for all you do. We pray for a great, uh, awesome service. We pray, God, that we continue to mature uh, numerically as, uh, I mean, um, as, as uh, our characters and as Christians, God, but we also grow numerically, God. Help us continue to reach out and share our faith with everyone uh, every day, God. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.